starting now. Hello, guys. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, it's about getting changes into open to the leap, uh, you know, leap 15 pre annual and to SLEE, which we can. And uh, let me tell you something about myself. I am Lubos Kotsman. I work as release manager for open to the leap. Let me maybe screen share. With you. And um, I basically started with Linux uh, since people were talking about it. With Mandrake Linux 9.1, it was attached to one of the magazines that I was reading. Otherwise, I used to be a release engineer for L6 and 7 in the past. And I was also shortly involved in the beginnings of Fedora modularity. And I was involved in the Czech uh, Open Solaris user group back then when I was kind of into Solaris. Uh, so let's check the agenda for today. Um, you may have noticed, but Leap 15.3 is relatively complex. Like there's a lot of projects that kind of may be and leap. And uh, the goal here is to basically guide you for these projects, tell you what they are used for, how to contribute to them. So we are on the same page. Um, and by the way, most of the information that I'll be talking about can be found on the open source packaging for leap wiki page. So if something's incorrect there, you know, or if you like need to explain, also feel free to contribute to the page. Um, any help is appreciated. So uh, let's talk about how we basically build nowadays. So um, the line on the on the top is tumbleweed or factory if you want to. And uh, for us, the important part is the bottom, right? Here, when we are talking about the so one set of packages roughly is binary inherited from SUSE SLE 15 from all service pack as a service pack. So just seeing 15 SP3 is kind of incorrect here because it's SP0, SP0 update, SP1, SP1 update, SP2, SP2 update, SP3. that makes uh, the SLE code stream plus package hub. That's roughly two threads. And the last little dot on the bottom, if you can see my cursor, is the leap branding, uh, you know, Kiwi, Kiwi files, uh, anything related to product builds, or any f or, or packages that we would like to explicitly fork from SLE because we want to keep maybe different behavior. There are a few, and they are not here also in package hub, but let's talk about it a little bit later. The general idea is that uh, SLE and package hub makes new leap. And since we were building package hub from leap 15, you know, we always copy the packages. You're thinking that just continuing in this this way actually makes sense. So uh, that's why we are using that way. We are looking for ways to simplify it uh, and, and improve it, make it a little bit faster because there is, uh, you know, it's not ideal the way how we build right now. And we want to make it a little bit better in 15.4. So um, the actual structure, I've mentioned the three projects. So you can see them on the top, open to the leap 15.3. Roughly 166 packages. What's different from as uh, from the 15.2 is that we are actually now building all of the arches with the exception of RMB7 uh, in there. So we have S390 there newly. Then there is the non-free project, which has uh, the non-free parts that would be Discord, Steam, and others. It's roughly 30 packages, or exactly 30 packages, sorry. Then the backports, that's uh, almost 10,000 packages. This is basically the place where most of the leap development happens. So if you actually submit submission, and you know, to leave, it will be redirected. I'll talk about the redirection later. Then it will most likely end up here, in between. You know, as long as it's a leap exclusive package. If it's leap package, it will end up in sleep. Then we get to sleep. So I'm actually using SUSE sleep 15 SP star because that really covers SP0, SP0 update. Uh, sorry, 15 update, 15, 15 update because we don't use SP0 in the in the project name. SP1, SP1 update, and so on. And that's uh, roughly 5,000 packages if you duplicate the individual updates to uh, individual streams. So, and then what's interesting, and maybe you are not aware of that, is that we have now OpenSUSE step, which um, is actually used for full rebuild of OpenSUSE, uh, sorry, SUSE Linux Enterprise, because uh, since we inherit binaries from SLE and SLE doesn't have ARMv7, we have to find a way how to, you know, enable ARMv7 builds. So the way how we approach it is by rebuilding each layer of SLE and actually adding ARMv7 support there. And uh, so in the end, it's the duplicated about 5,000 packages. But when I was checking the actual number, including all updates, it was more like 17,000 in each individual service pack. So it's quite large. And then the last project is under the OpenSUSE step namespace. And it's the front runner where we actually rebuild everything in a single layer, not in individual service packs. And uh, this is where we are actually trying to develop the Army 7. And um, you know we have also option to, we call it, in development versions or, or some suggested fixes for SP uh, for next service pack. So there is a little bit of flexibility where we can take some changes ahead 
because you know this bootstrap and rebuild takes quite a lot of time and this this verification really makes it shorter and uh, then we would you know if it's really like if the change is considered that it may be dangerous at this point we need more testing um, or it's not yet ready or the currently development service pack is maybe in in rc and we cannot take the change in there you know we can actually use this uh, feature to enable the builds and maybe we will use it use it for risk five enablement in the future because um we are in the point where you know this is already working so this is roughly the structure i'm skipping images containers i know about it but uh, let's talk about package submissions and this is probably where you would contribute uh if you would try to contribute to rv7 development it would be one of the two projects in the bottom most likely the front runner um so details about the projects open is elite 15.3 i mentioned that there is only a few 160 packages or so and uh, it's the top level project uh, which contains mostly the product configuration and branding and some work packages from sleep we are using it for building dvds um so it's sort of like umbrella project which takes all you know artifacts from from sleep from backports and then you know makes uh, makes deliverables and the there is one interesting part about the project and it has the submit request mirroring so if you are contributing to existing package not the new one and you submit something against open to the leap just like in the example of sr open to the leap in 3ga your package um it, it will actually detect where is the package coming from the origin of the package and uh, the submission will be redirected there so you don't have to think about where it is but there are certain cases where if you if we are, if we are rebuilding the package we have it for you really want to uh, you know you want to send a submit request to the true origin which could be sli in case that we forked it so now let's look at the largest one which is backports basically the new leap um, so the nice part compared to 15.2 is now that we built package hub packages this is the module on sli side the publishable part for sli and for leap we build it in one project not twice like we used to before and uh we we were considering like whether we should actually have these two layers or not and even now it's a question in 15.4 because uh, the additional layer of having being able to maybe put some extra branding on top of the backports and therefore have two different build configurations like for package hub and leap gives us a little bit of flexibility there are some downsides of as well like a little bit increased complexity and uh, as, as i've recently heard also um, the scheduler priority is different if, if you finish like uh, ftp3 build you know in foreign project versus the same project it's also a little bit of delay and uh, how to contribute to this new leap uh, so basically i told you if it's a existing package you just contribute to open the leap 15.3 ga and if it's a new one you have to be really explicit but you you know you can use backports to make sure like in any case but um you know i really like the redirection so i'm always advising to use it because it's a sleep package you know like it will do the sleep submission for you and uh you know for new packages please use the actual uh, destination if for whatever reason you need to add new package to sleep for example because we are updating some software there which then has a new dependency specify sleep um i will show you on the next slide how to do that if you are really putting something new to leap then you really want backports if you are adding some branding then maybe top level leap project and uh, right now the behavior is that if you would submit to 15.4 ga leap 15.4 ga which doesn't exist yet in obs but if, if it would it would actually land in the top level project which i feel like is incorrect so we may actually set default to backports because this will be the case for most of the packages so let's have a look at the SUSE SLI star. As I mentioned, it's it's basically layered structure. You don't see all these service packs here only because this is the predefined graphics from the from the slides. So um, it only fitted these four. But right, everything was once released as SUSE SLI 15G, and then you know like if there was an update to it, um, the package actually got updated through this SLI 15 update. So then you know it was SLI 15G plus updates. Then Sleep 15 SP1, maybe we rebased GNOME or something, then you know the package got forked in that project. So you can see how it's glued together through the inheritance. And um, there are some nice things about it because we actually are supporting uh, code streams in parallel, right? Like the SP1 LTS, and I believe ended recently. And um, therefore, we, we are trying to minimize the amount of um, code streams that are supported by our maintenance team, which is a nice idea. 
and uh, but that makes it a little bit tricky when you are trying to contribute to Steve because you kind of need to understand where you want to place it or you have to ask somebody um, you know to kind of help you where should we put the package usually uh, I think this is on the next slide actually usually if uh, you are thinking where to place it the answer is if it's rebase the kind of develop service pack so sp4 nowadays if it's a, a library that we try to maintain across all code streams then the answer is the latest supported service pack so uh, how to submit there again if it's uh, if the package is not fork in leap which will be in the most cases for sleep uh, for sleep packages we already try to use the binaries from SLE in as many cases as we can. You will just do a submit request against sleep 15.4, and then just name of the package, for example, bash. Bash is coming from SLE. And this will actually direct the submit request to SUSE SLE 15 SP4, uh, SP3 update nowadays, because the latest bash was released in SP3 GA. And uh, then the triggers review for SUSE SLE reviewers, and somebody has to manually run OSC jump review, which is a plugin to OSC that uh, release team has. And it will actually show the currently open requests. And if it looks good, if it has issue reference, I will go about details like what you need to have in that submit request to SLEE. Then it will trigger the mirror. So the submission will be cloned on the, on the internal in instance. And then we have some sync of statuses and comments in place that will basically make sure that, uh, you know, the package, you know, if, if, if it passes the workflow, you should know about it on the OBS side. There may be some bugs at the moment, but uh, this is the idea. And then it's basically like any other submission, which is created by SUSE engineer. It will be triggered under the name of person who ran the, uh, the review. So in most cases, it will be me. Uh, but yeah, so about the jump review, how it looks like. So this is the example output, for example, for patch. Um, it's basically telling me about the change and then I'm just looking if it has the uh, issue reference which we really have to have for every single SLE maintenance request you need to have a bug reference if you are doing version update you will have to have some features that are uh, referenced but then if, if it has all of this then we can accept it and it just creates a new SR you know with new ID but in different obvious, um, obvious instance the internal one which we refer to as IDS Right now, this is fully manual, just to make clear. So if I don't run it for two days, you have to wait for it. Maybe we should figure out some nice way how, you know, this is, uh, this doesn't depend on whether Lubo has vacation or not. Um, but we can talk about it uh, on release team meetings. So uh, closer look at Swiss uh, Slee. What's important when you are doing submission to Slee, right? That's the deadlines. And we try to actually have the same deadlines in Leap. So our alpha should be really related to their alpha, especially with deadlines, it should be exactly the same. So uh, it feels natural to contribute to it because uh, Slee may be a little bit more strict about like when the new features should come in Leap. It's generally um, after beta, you shouldn't really delete packages. So deletions should be before, but we, if, if it's communicated properly, we take changes up until RC, and then it should be really just bug fixes to stabilize it as, as much as we can. On Slate, it's a little bit more strict, and we have to respect that. It was always the case. It's not that this is something new. And uh, if it's a maintenance request or a late feature request, something that you would open around beta time or even later, which is happening all the time, there is something called ECO. And it may sound scary. We have it on Wiki, so you can actually look for it, what, what it exactly means. But it's basically engineering change order, which requires some additional approvals. To you, it remains hidden, because even if you have access to Jira, and I will show how it looks like later, you basically see just a feature. And then you know, in behind, there is one extra Jira, which is blocking your Jira, which requires, which has subtasks for each reviewer. And right now, I believe it's four reviewers, something like security team, um, a level three support, and so on, who are saying whether uh, change looks okay. There are weekly review meetings when they're actually going over all open DCOs. And once the approval is done, then we can proceed. Uh, proceed. It will be handed over to maintenance team and so on and so on. Uh, again, as I mentioned, all requests to SLEE have to reference some issue, um, either JIRA, that would be JSC hash, and then the JIRA ID. If you have, if you did request the open SUSE, uh, sorry, JIRA SUSE com access as open SUSE contributor, you may look there. If not, we have uh, weekly meetings on Monday and now also wiki page for planning for, for features for SP4 where we are referencing these features. 
And this is something that you should reference in the SR or the bug. You know, for most bug fixes to maintenance uh, maintenance updates, you just need to reference debugzilla, and that should be pretty fine. And uh, again, like if we will be rejecting this submit request, we are doing it uh, with good intention because we want to shorten the the feedback loop. Otherwise, we would mirror it; it would get rejected. It would just take a few more days. And right now, you know, we really need to do the filter so we don't waste anyone's time. So how does how do these Jira looks like, um, especially for Leaf 15.3? So if it's uh, not a bug fix or a CVE fix in general, but a rather version update, we we need to have some sort of feature, and um, we have an open source project within Jira where we are tracking all of them. We know that this is not ideal because requesting you know account takes some time. It's it's not that you can just log in and go there. We really have to you know make change on on SUSE's LDAP and so on it needs to be approved takes a few days. We are actually considering some public interface. Right now, Neil Gompa actually created um, the project leap slash features on the Pegger instance. We are considering if it could be the front end where we would have all the features and we would have to figure out some sort of sync probably manually in the beginning, but it would be probably more convenient. You could use your OpenSUSE login, just go there, create it, and then we would review them probably on our Mondays, meet, Mondays meetings, which I'm referencing here. We have it also on Wiki page. If you check the communities, the feature uh, change requests wiki. And what we are doing is that we are collecting uh, these features that are necessary to, you know, for these uh, version updates in SLEE. Um, we are always monitoring if there is some progress or what's the blocker. Talk about them. Talk, talk about what's new and just making sure that um, you know we are we are tracking everything that needs to be done to unblock progress on on leap the community part. This is the idea. Most feature requests are hey I need to update my package and you know like we need to update this version in Sli this version of library in Sli and this would be basically the case. So if you ever feel blocked on something, don't don't say, well, I will wait until SLE updates it. Like we can really request the change. There is good use case for it. I need it to update my software. So, you know, or we can fix this bug, for example, then this is exactly what is it used for. The attendees of these meetings are usually me, Neil, sometimes Gertian joins. I know Sarah was there a few times as well, so feel free to join. I'm also considering maybe in the future to run it on slash bar rather than slash feature requests because we have more attendance there and it feels more natural to talk to these people. Just switch to, to this for half an hour, go for it. People can tell you their opinions or, or maybe we can create some more requests if necessary. And uh, I really want to be open about these and in the end, it has to be tracked for Jira, but maybe we can use different front ends so it doesn't, you know, you don't have to really worry about the accounts. So uh, we were talking about these origins, Slee, Backboards. Uh, we've also mentioned front and our step, uh, you know, Slee. How do I check that? So I have also some exam examples here which are a little bit tricky, like the LLVM. Um, so you can use, we don't have origin manager in 15.3, so you, you can use OSC meta or um, the web browser. I will show it two slides after. And you would do OSC meta package, open to the leap 15.3 LLVM. You know that there is submit request redirection, so if you want to have it easy, just submit to leap. But you know, if you really want to double check whether the package is not really a sleep package, you, I recommend to use OSC meta. Um, so there you would do LLVM and you can grab it by project or just, you know, it's it's the second line or first line. And you see that this package is coming from OpenSUSE backwards, SLEE 15 SP3. So it seems like it's a community package. So it's a leap package. But in the end, this is one of the packages that we had to fork because of different, you know, expectations on SLEE side and leap side. SLEE has LLVM 7, we need a way newer LLVM. And this is the meta package, you know, just saying which one is the default. And um, otherwise, the same versions of LLVM are available across uh, both distributions, but we have different defaults. Let's go this way. And now the question is, okay, so I see it's in SLEE as well. It's in backwards. So, so where do I submit these submit requests? And that, that's that's the tricky part, I guess, uh, on the new model. So uh, that really depends on some aspects. Um, you can double check really quickly, like um, and, and you know use common sense. Is it the identical sources? And if it's identical sources, then you probably know that we forked it because we need to rebuild it. Maybe we are utilizing the is open to the macro and we have something, you know, some different behavior on leap. And if they are different, then you know that we have an agreement to have completely different source source code, like an LLVM's case. And uh, if it's completely different, then most likely the answer is that you want to, um, you know, contribute to, uh, to leap, sorry 
because we have different sources, so we, we will work on these. If it's identical, then SLI is the answer because we, we have to be in sync. And in most cases, um, we are doing forks, for example, because we have some extra multiple flavors, uh, which we would like to have in Leap and in Package Hub, but they are not supported in the SLI side. So usually this Lee is the answer, and then we would, you know, copy the source code as soon as it's done and rebuild the package so we can ship the additional flavors. Um, and then if it's in SLI and you see that, for example, the package just like here is coming from SLI 15 SP1 GA, which is uh, EOL already, then that's tricky. Then I really recommend to sync up with, sync up with us. But on the other hand, if you file a submit request to whatever, even be it SLI 15 SP1 GA, we will go through that review and we will see, oh, we probably need to send it to something newer. So in general, the answer is the latest support is a supported service pack. Or if you are doing rebase, the currently developed service pack, like SP4 in this case, for example. Um, so it's a little bit tricky. And I know that it will require guidance, but we are here to help you. And um, again, as mentioned, we, we, we are reviewing every single submission. So if it's something suspicious, we will just let you know that we have to redo it differently or help you to achieve what you need to achieve. Another case, um, branding packages, I've mentioned that are in Leap. So um, this is a very simple example. Again, you would do OSCSR to Leap 15.3. Just like in many uh, in the other cases, the only exception is really when we fork the package. There, you have to think about where do I really want to, you know, update the code. So here, just uh, request to leave 15.3 uh, maintenance requests. So maintenance requests are currently tricky. So for previous uh, code streams, you can just do SR against let's say sleeve 15. I don't know SP2 update and it will work. But for sleeve 15 SP3 update, it currently doesn't work. We have a bug, and I'm discussing it with Autobuild how to get it fixed. Because uh, if you do MR, it, it triggers the open source maintenance request and it doesn't get to SLEE. So we have to improve this. But uh, stay tuned, like it should be fixed within the next few days. And uh, the maintenance workflow documentation, including the SLEE one, will be documented on the maintenance update process. Wiki, yeah, another way to check origin. I've mentioned that you can do it also through web browser. So if you go to LEE 15.3 project, um, you can check the inherited well. For packages that we are introducing in 15.3, it would be, or the branding packages, it would be the packages, but you want to see the inherited ones because I told you most of the leap is coming from backports. And here you just look for package and you see, oh, it's coming from SLI or it's coming from backports and which you know service pack of SLI, this is the very first one, the zeroed service pack. It's just, we are not using SP0 in the name. So this is actually a convenient way. Um, one thing that I would like to say before the discussion, because next step is just discussion, you know, like listening to your pain points and uh, basically looking for some suggestions how to make this a little bit more user friendly, contributor friendly, maybe is the best word here. And um, I would like to ask you to join BAR, you know, every single time when you have a moment or when you want to discuss some of the um, issues or hindrance or whatever we, you have with contributing, there's always someone and, you know, this is taken from half past 3 a.m. and you can see, uh, you know, CEST time and you can see that people are there, everybody's happy. It's just because we are from all around the globe. And now let's move to discussion. Because otherwise this is the end of the presentation. Let me switch then. Hey guys, can you hear me? We can hear you. Perfect, perfect. Any questions? Like I know it's overwhelming because there is a lot of information. So sorry for that. But unfortunately, this is how the new layout looks like. Um, and if somebody has some questions or something is still unclear, just ask. You know, 
this is why the discussion is more important than the actual slides because uh, we want to fix your problem and not just you know talk about how it looks like. No one. Well, yeah, Neil can talk about it a little bit, right? <laughs> so, Neil, let let me let me give context to people. So, Neil, as mentioned, is one of the people who actually attend the meeting like regularly. He's there every time. And uh, you know he has the he has the experience with late features, not yet fe early features, because I think that we we started relatively late. Also, the 15.3 had really short development phase because we could only start with the beta two because of the uh, NDA. So this release we will have much more time actually to work on some early features as well. Um, your turn, Neil.